Today we're at Acacia Park, that's out in Henderson, and I have a lovely lady here with me, Lisa Ortega, and she's one of the managers of the park here. Yep, Urban Forester. <laughs> <laughs> and she's done a great job, folks. As we look across this park, it's kind of hidden. Uh, not many people know about it so far, and I, that's one reason why we're here. But you got something else. You got a book in your hand. Tell us just a bit about that book. Well, this was a book that came out. It's called The Trees for Tomorrow. So it has at least 40 selections of different trees that are really good for this area. And it goes over all their attributes. So whatever it is that you're looking for, fall color or blooms, it's all there. But now you've done something unique. You've taken those 40 trees and planted here. Yep, yeah, we've tried to include all 40 of them here for the homeowners so they can look at them and they can, before they pick them up at the nursery, they can come here and see how big they really get and what attributes they get to make sure that's the right choice for their area. And they're all drought tolerant. Yes. Uh, you know, last, last week, folks, we focused in on drought tolerant plants and how they survive when we actually run out of water. And the beauty about these trees here, they can, they're getting water, of course, but they won't, won't be getting much water as we get into a drought if we really got that uh, mean. Yep, they can really survive a drought just based on what they look like. They've got super small leaflets and the, uh, they're good at collecting water and the sun filters right through them and so does the wind. So they're really good in drought conditions. They can take a lot more than a very large leaf can that requires lots of water. And what I think is unique, uh, Leaf, you see those little tiny leaflets? Look like mouse ears. <laughs> yeah. And when it really runs out of water, what do they do? Um, well, they can drop or they, they just drop. fold and uh, wait for the next water. <laughs> and, and then, of course, look at the green. It goes all the way back and goes clear back to the actual trunk. And, and uh, it can still continue to photosynthesize and, and do its things, keep right on living. Yeah, still make sure even without the leaves, which um, not many other plants can. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, everybody knows about the mesquite. Uh, it does real good. Once again, it's got little tiny leaves, too. Yep, and it's got a nice protective bark as well so that uh, you get a lot less sun scalding and uh, a lot healthier in the desert. Uh -huh. You know, another one that, that comes from the Mediterranean is the olive. I like it because it brings a blue gray, but I've actually seen a place where they shut the water, uh, it was a park, a golf course, they shut the water down and 15 years later that guy was still p uh, producing. Now that's the kind of tree you want, that's for sure. Uh -huh. One that can take that kind of drought uh, just in case. Uh, and a lot less water is a lot less on the bill and a lot less from the Colorado, so that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, you know, as you come out here, uh, you're seeing trees about how old are, how old's the park? Um, I'd say these are about 15 or so years old, uh, the oldest ones, and then there's been a lot of new replacements as time goes by. Mm -hmm. You know, folks, that's something very significant because a lot of people want a tree, I want a small tree, I want a big tree, and, and then they go park something like this right in front of the window, and it happens to have a my house, uh, and, and it just consumes everything. But here you're gonna to get to see the regular size of the tree. That's right, so in maturity, if they stay small, and that's really what you need, you always wanna put the right tree to the right place. So you wanna make sure that the large size you have is how big it gets when it gets uh, to its mature size. It'll keep you from having to do a lot of pruning every week. <laughs> and, and I had to actually do that. I called my old friend Dennis over to clean my tree out the oh, other day. Oh, that's good. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, come by. All the trees are marked, just about all of them. Yep. And you can take a look. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. And then go back and put it in your landscape. That's right. And don't forget to bring your book. Where can they get the book? Um, they can pick these up at Star Nursery, or they can call any of the municipalities, especially in the Parks and Rec. They all have them. Mm -hmm. Once again, folks, is Acacia Park. Where is it? It's at 50 Casa del Fuego, which is off of Gibson and Las Palmas Entrada. Just keep coming down uh, Las Palmas Entrada, and you'll see us on the left. And, and then just go down to the end right towards the freeway, and there it is. You're going to be amazed at how beautiful that park is. <laughs>